Um, so I said, all right, I, I, you know, I do it your way, God, because you know, I'm not a way to do it. But in my excitement, I want you to understand, the excitement wasn't about being up here to speak, to say, okay, I'm speaking tonight, right? Because tell the truth, if you're going to be at the podium, the little knocking ears with the knees, and if I put my hand, pull up my hand, it going, you're, you're going to get blurred vision from the vibration, right? <laughs> but I ended up typing out my notes with the last part at the front and the, the first part at the end. So if you see me skipping all over the place. So the Lord says to me, I'm expecting. I said, Lord, what am I expecting? He said, but you've been in a, you're pregnant. You've been in a state of expectancy for months now. I said, okay. Will you arise to labor to bring forth? Or will you say like the Shulamite woman when her bridegroom was knocking on the door, I've washed my feet already, I can't dirty them up again. Or, um, I put on my gown, I can't take it off again. When God comes and knocks in that night time, I say, come, let us go and look at all that I've created. Let's just enjoy it together. Will you say, I'm coming? Or will you say, Lord, I'm tired? Pregnancy only comes through intimacy. Okay? Intimacy, obviously, leads to pregnancy. Pregnancy is a state of expectancy, a state of anticipation, a state of laboring to bring forth. Right? Because if you don't bring it forth, something will dead. Either you or what you carry. Fair enough? In the natural, a sperm cell will swim until it finds an egg to attach itself to. The egg, not just any old egg, okay? It will attach itself to the right one. The one that God said, this is going to be the person, okay? It's not going to attach itself to anything else. In the spiritual, the word of God is a seed seeking the fertile soil of our spiritual womb. God does nothing in this earth without our participation. So like an expectant mother, we must care for our spiritual baby until and after the time of birth. Because you know, just if you really are looking forward to what you're giving birth to, right, then you're not going to just give birth to it and abandon it. You're going to nurture it and carry it to maturity. So what are the things that you look out for? You avoid exposure to toxins. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on those things. It's a scientific fact that babies in the mother's womb, their temperament is determined by virtually what goes through the mother's mind during, um, during the pregnancy. Okay? If the mother has thoughts of abortion, the baby comes out with feelings of rejection. No, you have to understand that the, the, the step before doing is actually thought. So when you think it, you have already done it. The Bible says if you're lost in your thoughts, you have done it. If you're lost after a woman in your mind, you're committing adultery or fornication. So it do. Right? It's just for the body to follow through what the soul is saying. So not just the things you think on, it's the things also that enter your gates. What you look at during this time of caring. 
what you listen to, what you speak, even some of the things you touch, hold on to. These are the things that can poison what you're carrying. It can corrupt it, okay? You should follow a healthy diet. Constantly feeding on the word sustains your spirit. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But solid food is for the mature, who, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from he evil, Hebrews 5 verse 14. You should maintain a healthy weight. That means you're going to trim fat, which is what? Pride, until you are spiritually lean. Watch the sugar intake. For the lips of those who will lead you into adultery, that is idolatry, are like honey. That's a paraphrase of Proverbs 5 verse 3. However, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. You both know, you know that there's good and there's bad sugar. So be careful of which sugar you're taking in in your diet. Here's the best part. Talk to your health provider. Constantly. I can't preach. Yes? <laughs> if you keep constant dialogue with Jesus, he will give you forewarnings of the enemy's plans for what you're carrying. He will give you warnings of something that might cause you to miscarriage. And he keeps you in a state of readiness. Maybe not tell me for what she talked about. I tried. And you must be prepared for delivery. An immature body is not likely to deliver safely. Come on, come on. All kinds of complications can occur. But a body that has reached maturity can bring into fulfillment all that God has purpose for it. And when this happens, glory comes. So how we come to maturity? When the human being is born, the baby goes through several development stages. As a baby is nourished by milk, the daily intake of this food nourishes the body and causes it to grow. However, at each new stage of development, <laughs> the body requires, let me mix up my notes, the body requires different things. Not just to sustain it, but to cause growth and for it to become strong. In the same way, a steady diet of the word helps the immature Christian to develop in Christ. As growth occurs by hearing and doing, being obedient, the spirit craves more and more of this good food. It craves the presence of God from where this food can only come. come on. We begin to see evidence of his glory. And faith is built up. And as our faith builds up, we believe God for more and more of who he is revealed to come us. On. Nothing, on. absolutely nothing is impossible anymore. So if God says to you today, Sylvia, go out and tell the son to stand up still because mm -hmm. you need to do something before that. Come You're supposed to be so sure that you said, no, that word impossible. No, no, my man. So stand still for the next two hours. I believe that it will happen because the presence of God is in you and his glory in you causes that son to obey you. Right? So as the body learns to battle disease in order to immunize itself and become resistant to disease, in the same way we have to face trials in order to learn to overcome. We get to a place where we recognize, not by strength, not by might, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. By purging our bodies of impurities and keeping away from, keeping away from them, we maintain a healthier spiritual lifestyle. In the same way, when we seek forgiveness for our sins and walk in repentance, that's turning from our old ways, we keep our temples in a state of readiness to experience the glory of God. Yesterday, Sudin said the next level of his glory ushers in the supernatural. Folks, I don't know about you. Let me tell you, be excited. Be excited so tell me can keep myself still. I wake up and I shout in hallelujah. 
Me and Vanna are too big here. But I sure care me where it is. <laughs> right? I'm sure waking up the neighbors too. Right? But I just, I don't know what I'm dreaming, you know. I just know I wake up and I word, Hallelujah! And I'm saying, God, what you're doing, what you're doing. I just, I can't wait. I believe in God for some supernatural things in my life. And I don't believe in him for anything less than supernatural. I am pregnant. I am pregnant. And I am expecting that supernatural will be my normal way of life. And the only way I can do that is to be intimate with God. Right? I have purpose. That must be birth. Come on. It will not still birth. It's not going to miscarry. It's going to be birth. And why am I so excited about birthing? In my life, I have gone through 11 miscarriages and two atopic pregnancies. I've never given birth. Come on. But God has blessed me with some children. Praise God. <laughs> However, just the thought that something is going to be birthed out of me. I am just waiting for God to say, delivery time. And then I will take my position on my knees like Elijah. And I will say, I am ready, God, wherever you are. God will not bring his glory when you're not ready. If you're not ready to receive it, if you're not ready to see it, if you're not ready to experience it, you have one day to it's the truth. If you look in the Bible, listen, you have to get the temple ready. You have to get it ready because if the glory come and impurity, sin, rejection, and forgiveness, all those poisons are in the temple. So, mother dead. Come on. Okay? Come on. You have read where priests, you have, remember Pastor Courtney tell us, you know, them used to have a rope. And when a man go in, and they not ready to experience the glory, he drop down, then they have to dry him out. And the man behind him better make sure to set him ready. Right? So, how does one become intimate with God? Draw close. Draw close. No get left behind. You don't want to be where he was. So my presence will left back there, you know. But it's not the fullness of his presence. You want to be in the fullness of his presence at all times. That means you don't pray when you have a spare time. You must be, oh, listen, this is all when me driving. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm driving on the road, you know, me I pray in my spirit. Me not a radio for distract me. So, me make music with my music, yes, me sing. In the spirit. I don't want to dispute that. Amen. All right. Sometimes people pull up behind me in the traffic, you know. And I'm going, rub and rub. I'll be one night care, so me loud. And I will just look at them and go, rub and rub and rub and rub Hallelujah. And then all they can say to me is, Hallelujah. <laughs> the other day I was coming home and I just, the only way I could describe it to Vivian was saying, Vivian, I feel a hallelujah in my spirit. You're going to search for the right one. So I just kept coming out with hallelujahs, hallelujahs, hallelujahs. Some were loud, some were quiet. A passing people are looking at me in the face. I'm going, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I'm just rejoicing that God's presence is in me. It can't happen if he's not there. So the other thing is you don't just seek a relationship. A relationship is um our how would I, I have a good relationship as a friend, as friends, as church brothers and sisters. What you want is communion and fellowship. Relationship is an emotional or other connection between people. Right? Fellowship is a state of sharing mutual interests, activities, companionship, friendship. God called Moses friend. You don't want to be called friend. You don't want to be called friends. Yes. Sons. Yes. Sons of God. This was because Moses shared his interest, was emotionally connected to him, and was always in his presence, and the presence of God was always with him. 
God created us for worship. We are His crown in glory. If we worship anything else, we are not just insulting God, we are insulting ourselves. We are the pinnacle of His creation. So to worship anybody as but God or anything as but God is to say, is, is to elevate like I'm worshiping this microphone. I'm saying this microphone is higher than me and I'm making God a liar. That can't be right. It's not right. We are the only part of his creation that is like him. We are made in his image and likeness. And in order to experience his glory, we have to come to that place of intimacy. We have to be prepared to meet him at the appointed times. Answer his call. Be obedient. Desire him. In Song of Songs, verse six, chapter 6, verse 3, I am my beloved and he is mine. Man, I, let me tell you something, you know. In my community, nobody has to ask if I love Ron. I am his and he's mine. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Okay? When I say, God is my beloved and I am his beloved. We are talking about God now. Right? I am declaring the level of intimacy that I have with him. I can talk to him about anything. No matter how trivial it seems. Today, this evening, I wanted a arm. I wanted a drumstick. A chocolate one. I know the Lord was really telling me. No, this evening after fasting. I had a nice meal after fasting and I wanted to, you know, top it up. No, not yet. Food. So I saw ice cream truck. Let our Christian drive it down. They only have the vanilla one, which have nuts, and I hate nuts. You know, I really heard the Lord saying, you really shouldn't have that ice cream right now. So I said, so oh, Holy Spirit, I really want the drumstick. I'm going to drive her down to the wholesale. Then I have none. An ice cream place beside it. Then I have none. It's all right. Holy Spirit, I get the message. Your wisdom is better than mine. Shortly after that, I felt my belly cut. <laughs> I know why I shouldn't have the drums. <laughs> okay? Desire means a longing or a craving for something that brings satisfaction or enjoyment. Do you desire the presence of God? Not just want to be in it and then you're going out of it. Desire means you're longing for it. That if you're ever out of it for one second, you feel like you're ever dead, you have to go back in it. That's desire. You can't get enough of it. Joshua never want to come out. You understand? Even if, if he could have stayed there the whole time, he would have stayed. I think if Moses didn't have to bring down the second set of tablets, he would have just stayed because I think by then he was just tired of the Israelites. Then. And then give him too much trouble, God wasn't giving him no trouble. In his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are many pleasures. Psalm 16 verse 11. Many pleasures. Do you think anything on earth here can give you the many pleasures that God can give you? The presence of God can give you? Nothing! Solomon 6 verse 12 says, before, this is the Shulamite woman speaking, before I realized it, my desire set me among the royal chariots of my people. When your desire is for God and the things of God because of his presence in you, you become elevated, promoted, favored. Come on. Hallelujah. Song of Songs is, is the, I hardly hear any preaching on it. But I don't know why, even when I, I wrote my first book, that book, that thing, it just resonated with me. And I realized it reveals the emotions of the bridegroom, Jesus, towards his bride, us. I, I'm not going to say the church, I'm saying us. We are his bride. I read something today that said, God is so masculine that every one of us is feminine. We are his bride. Okay? So men don't feel no way. You're a bride. 
<laughs> okay, nothing no wrong with that. Verse 1. Oh, that he would kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for his love is better than wine. This speaks of a new convert who has a desire to know more about Jesus. A longing develops in the spirit for the things of God. His love is better than wine, says that the bride recognizes that intimacy with Jesus is more pleasurable than any earthly pleasure. In chapter 2, verse 4, she says, He has brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. The banqueting house was a house of enjoyment, a place of joy and gladness. If you allow Jesus to lead you to his banqueting house, you are covered under his perfect love. Hallelujah. If you accept this covering of his love, then you understand that nothing can move you. Ex you experience the fullness of joy. I don't mean the half fullness you know, or the three quarter fullness. I mean fullness of joy to overflowing. That your joy can spill out to others and many, many pleasures at his right hand. She says, sustain me with raisins and refresh me with apples, for I am sick with love. In his presence, our emotions become so overwhelmed. Our mind, our imagination, our worldview become stretched to the limits until an explosion takes place in our spirit. And we need the refreshing of God and the undergirding of his embrace. We must seek his embrace, his left hand cradling our head, his right hand embracing us. There are times when he calls us out of slumber. Come, let us labor together. He invites us. The winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Winter, the season of barrenness, of dryness, of hibernation, that has passed. That has passed. The rains have come and gone. Now it is a time, a season of blossoming, of blooms, of fruitfulness. He wants to hear our voice praising him. He wants us to present ourselves to him, he said, let me see your face. You can't do that if you're not drawing close. And so I leave you with this tonight. To experience more glory, more glory, you have to become more intimate. Intimacy with God must be the norm in your life. Everything else must be abnormal. Supernatural must be normal because God is a supernatural God. Hallelujah. And for us, remember, the winter is over. Hallelujah. The rains have come and gone. Yeah. It is now a time for blooming, Hallelujah. for blossoming. Let us blossom under the love of God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we lift you up tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you're a God whose love is perfect. We thank you, God, that your desire is to take us into your banqueting hall and cover us under your love. We thank you, Lord, that you desire for us to show our faces to you, to come into your presence at all times. Mighty God, you will never turn us back. We praise you, God, because you're the God of love. You want to hear our voice lifted in praise to you. Our every waking moment must be about praising you. Lord, as we lift up our faith to believe supernatural things of you this season, mighty God, we thank you that as we draw close to you, you will cradle us in your right arm, mighty God, in your mighty embrace where nothing can move us. So in the name of Jesus, we lift you up and we bless you for you are God who is to be honored above everything else. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.